I've always had a passion for being around and learning about animals. When I was younger, going to zoos and animal parks was always a part of my life. I wanted to share my passion with family and friends, so I started working with people that loved animals as much as I did, and my YouTube channel was born. Welcome back to my animal education series. Today I'm here with Jane at the Lolo Zoo. Hello. Hello. And what large animal do we have here? We have a Malayan taper. And where can you find these? Probably in Malaysia? Yeah, in Malaysia, in the country known as Myanmar now, Thailand, Burma, areas like that. So, why do you have this animal here, like in this, uh, this room? This room is called the day room. It's one of four areas that he can be exhibited in. We rotate the animals in the islands. We have five different species, and we rotate them through four different habitats. And today, because it is so chilly outside, he is inside for this purpose. And I was reading earlier that this is a multi-species room. Yes. Well, it was probably the first. The yes, it was. It was the first ever built in, in the world that we could rotate five different species through uh, the different habitats. And in particularly, our day room is very important in the fact that they can have any type of enrichment that's appropriate for them in there. And that we can have arboreal animals, um, like the orangutans and the siamangs, but then we can also exhibit terrestrial animals like siamangs, I mean like tapirs, tigers, and babarusa. Yeah, I thought it would be really interesting to have like, a uh, predator play, predator prey relationship kind of in here without them meeting each other. Right. And they smell each other and everything. Yeah. That's definitely a ritual that most zoos don't have now. Right. Because it it's is. very dangerous to do that. Well, well, and what's interesting is, is these, these animals, even though there's a prey predator relationship, animals out in the natural world don't go and hide from predators. They're aware of them, but they still have to go on with their lives. So these guys get a natural stimulation that a lot of zoo animals do not get because they do need to have that heightened sense of awareness. And I have noticed over time that our tapers, anywhere that our tigers scent mark a space, our, ta our tapers will come out and they'll scent mark over where the tigers scent marked. And I can see he's having a lot of fun back there. Yes. So, many people got to say, this is a very odd looking animal. So, what are they even related to? Um, they're very closely related to horses and rhinos. So you'll see some of how when he moves and he gallops, he does look like a horse running. He's a little more agile than a rhino. Um, his toe configuration is four toes on the front, three on the back. That is similar to a rhino. Each little toe has a little hoof on it. His jaw teeth are like a horse. And what does the nose help him with? The nose is kind of like a little prehensile nose, almost like a little trunk. It helps him pull vegetation into his mouth and it helps pull large stems into their mouths and they can bite those off and eat those. These guys are um, herbivores. So they eat a lot of greenery, they eat a lot of water plants. So how much does he weigh? Um, I'm gonna say Chip is around um, 650 right now. He weighs about 650 pounds. We weigh these guys at least on a monthly basis um, to monitor their, their uh, weight and to make sure that they're getting enough are not getting too much too. Sometimes uh, food can be love and we do tend to spoil these guys a little bit so they'll get a little extra. And what is this little whistle that he's letting out? Um, he's vocalizing, he's having a good time, he's playing and so they do whistle and they pick up. And a lot of that is when they're very excited, when they, like if we put them together, we put the male and the female together, they'll whistle and they'll hick up to each other and they start to play. And they run and they chase each other and they kind of play tag and then he's just feeling really, really good. Is that not a sound that you would think would come out of a about 600 pound animal? You would think there would be something more guttural or deeper. Yes. Um, he can make almost a roar noise whenever he's threatened, and it's something that you don't want to hear. It's a very odd noise. Um, I've only heard it a couple of times whenever he, when the female was pushing the issue with him, and he said, I think you need to step away. <laughs> well, it's good that you don't hear that too often. No. Because like with a 600 pound animal, that could become a very not good situation. Y yes, it could be. It could mean he's going to be aggressive, but he does give you a warning. He does tell you. Um, these guys are built like tanks. They're very dense, very thick. Their skin is probably about an inch and a half thick. Wow. Um, but they have very short hair. It's very dense, and they have, they're very oily because they do come from the rainforest. They spend a lot of time in the water. Um, their tears are really thick, and sometimes you'll see some drainage, and it looks as if they're crying, but that's because their tears have a lot of fat in them, and because they're in the water, it keeps their eyes lubricated. So what is your favorite thing about uh, the taper, or chip specifically? Uh, that they're just so unique. 
they, yes, they're that's, not that's really true. <laughs> they're not really similar to anything else. They are related to horses and rhinos, but they just are everything about them is different. It doesn't match. It's not typical. It's not normal. Everything they do is a little bit odd. The sounds don't match what it looks like. It's related to horses and rhinos, as you said. It looks nothing like a horse or a rhino. Right. So they're extremely cool. And when I was younger, I liked the little plastic animal toys. I always thought that those sounds like a medium or a large dog. And to see a 600 pound taper, I'm like, that is definitely not what I imagined it looked like. Right. So it's really cool. Yeah. Definitely an animal that I probably have not had an opportunity to do before. And to do it here is it's really cool to see. Great. Well, thank you so much for telling us about these papers. You're welcome. And if you guys enjoyed this week's episode, don't forget to leave a big thumbs up down below, subscribe to my channel, and also check out my Instagram, at Culture. And as always, see you next week.